Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We worship you this afternoon because we are in your presence. Come on, just lift up your voice and worship God in your own words. Just to give him thanks that he has accorded you an opportunity to be in his presence. Just to give him thanks because he has made it possible for you to worship him. This is something that would have been done by angels. It is something that would have been done by, by somebody else, by stones, by trees. Worshiping God could have done, God would have made it possible for something else, for the sun, the stars. It says the angels cast down their golden crowns and just give him adoration. But this afternoon, you are part of that that is offering worship to God. Why don't you just give him thanks? Say, Lord, you're worthy of my worship and more. And so this afternoon, I give you my heart. Lord, that as you speak, that you'll speak direct to my heart, but also give me grace to walk in what you want to say to me this afternoon. And so, Lord, I acknowledge that we gather in your presence coming from different contexts. Lord, I acknowledge that we have different challenges. We are in different places. But you know it all. Nothing takes you by surprise this afternoon, Lord. Nothing is going to shock you because you are our God. You see our hearts. You see our dilemmas. You see our troubles. You see what we are going through. You see how challenged we are. You see how sincere we are in seeking you. Lord, you know how much we have sacrificed. Yes, Lord, you know it. You know. And so, Lord, will you give us a visitation? Yes, you know our struggles with sin. You know our struggles with the flesh. Lord, you know it all. And that's why we choose you this afternoon. That's why we choose to come and humble ourselves before you. And so, Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Lord, there are even those that are unable to put their feelings into your words. They are just stranded. They are stuck. But I ask that there will be a special visitation this afternoon. In your presence, Lord, we will not remain the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Please sit. We welcome you, those of you that are with us online, worshiping with us. We do not take you for granted. God bless you right there where you are because he is able. God is not limited by distance or anything. So this afternoon, he will meet you in that space right there. Turn with me to Ephesians. I like a lot speaking in context. So our focus really this afternoon is fighting the flesh and we should be looking at verse 18, uh, 19 of Ephesians chapter 5. But I, I really want to read the entire passage from Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1 uh, all the way to verse 20. So I say the few things that I want to say. I really want to say them uh, in context. Ephesians, Paul writes and says to the church at Ephesus, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But, am but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. Of, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person. Such a person is an idolater, has any in inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord has nothing, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. 
it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. An Anglican say the word of the Lord. <laughs> Fighting the flesh. And I really want to talk about new life in love. New life in love. Have you noticed how, how you walk? Because in this passage, the language used is walk. Walk in the light. Walk in wisdom. Walk, walk, walk. And I just thought, can I start by calling our attention to how we walk, literally walking. Do we make noise with our shoes as we are walking? Uh, do we walk like our fathers? Do, we walk like, do our children walk like us? Walking. Walking is to do with, Paul uses the image of walking to illustrate Christian life. Okay? He uses the term walking, walking in his love, walking in his light, walking in wisdom. That's what we see in this passage. And there are three things that Paul talks about when he uses the word walking that I want to bring out from this entire uh, passage to the Ephesians, particularly verse 1 to verse uh, 20. And I will say briefly on the first two and then maybe a bit of time on the third one, which is our theme for focus. Loving sacrificially Walking in love, you know, he's just been talking about walking the new walk in the previous verses, and our new walk begins with inner life as believers. It's not so much to do with the outside, but rather what we see on the outside is something that comes from inside. It originates from inside. So chapter 4, verse 17 to 19, our walk begins with our inner self. Our walk on the outside is only possible to please the Lord if we have yielded our inner self to the Lord. Otherwise, if the inside of us is not given to the Lord, it's not possible for us to walk in a manner that glorifies the Lord. So in verse 1, now Paul continues to describe this walk, and that is why in verse 1 he says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. He doesn't say we will be children of God. He says, as children of God. In other words, we are children of God. Remember, he's writing to the saints at Ephesus. He's writing to believers, you and I, somebody like you who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so he says, we are children, beloved children at that. We are not just children whose father has no choice but to have us. We are beloved children children. I don't know whether that changes the way you think about yourself, to know that I am not just a child of God, but I am a beloved child. It is intense. It's intense. Come on. And so when you realize that this is how God sees you, this is how God has accepted you, you cannot help but be an imitator of such a God. I think I am not sure I am doing a good job. I think I am trying to do a good job on my journey of parenting, but I have noticed that, you know, my children are trying to do so many things just like I do them. 
And, you know, sometime last year, I stopped taking, you know, sugar. And I have noticed that actually two of my sons now have also said, Daddy, we are going off sugar. <laughs> you know, because Daddy loves us. We, we want to do the things Daddy loves as well. You get it? So when you read the scripture and it says, Beloved children of God, it is implied that we should equally love God, the God that has loved us. And that's why Paul says, be imitators. He says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children of God. In other words, children who are beloved are expected to imitate their lover, in this context, God. Amen. And then verse 2, and walk in love as Christ loved us and give him, gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Again, walk in love. Why should we walk in love? As Christ loved us. So what we are doing is seeing what Christ has done and as beloved children of God, we do what he has done. Amen? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. He loved us so much that he died. He loved us so much that he held nothing back. And the summary of what he did is a fragrant offering. A fragrant. Christ's love is a fragrant because it pleased the Lord. It moved God. Christ's sacrificial love is mainly about pleasing the Lord. And Paul says, you can't look at Jesus, do this, and you remain the same. You must. We are exhorted to do the same. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. We are the aroma of Christ. And so, walking in Christ, therefore, transforms us into an aroma to God. Sweet smelling incense. But that also means when we walk outside Christ, we become a bad stench. Oh, we are yucky when we do not walk in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So our new walk, verse 4, involves our speech as well. Let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, no coarse joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. That a talk cannot be normal. It's not acceptable. And remember that all these are anchored in the fact that we love God and so imitate God for what he has done for us. And of course, in verse 5 and 6, he continues to, to challenge us with the consequences. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral, impure, always covetous, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. And God, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And in this verse, particularly, Paul is talking about people who claim to be believers, but they live contrary to their confession. He says, do not be fooled and don't fool anyone. You cannot say you are a child of God and at the same time live like assistant devil. That contradiction is not acceptable. The, the, wh what you're saying is not consistent with biblical truth because there is no salvation without transformation. 
And even as we talk about fighting the flesh this afternoon, it is anchored in that truth that salvation comes with transformation. And so if you claim to have received the gospel, but you still live the same old way you lived, I begin to question the gospel you believed. Because there is no salvation without transformation. And so that is what he really talks about. But secondly, verse 8 to 14, he talks about shining attractively. Shining. Paul goes on to develop further what our new work looks like. Verse 8. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. At one time you were darkness. I don't know whether you have noticed that he does not say, at one time you were in the darkness. He says, at one time you were darkness. Can you imagine? Have you ever thought about yourself as being darkness? Not just being in darkness, but you yourself being darkness, which means even wherever you went, you took darkness. He says, at one time you were darkness. But, and the statement, but, changes that condition. Now you are light in the Lord. It means now that you are light, wherever you go, you take light. Amen. Walk as children of light. We used to be darkness. By God's grace, we have become light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as recipients of this grace, walk as children of light. Christian life means walking as children of light each and every day. There is nothing like I am now in the spirit and I am now out of the spirit. That is your own creation to just create some conveniences for you to sin and walk in the flesh and some other conveniences to claim to be believer. Some of you say, you see, at that time I couldn't do anything because I was in the spirit. There is nothing like you are now in the spirit. Now you are out of the spirit. Now as a believer, you are expected to be on 24 hours, seven days a day. Amen? Seven days a week. Walk as children of light each and every day. People will notice not so much our talk, but our walk. People will notice not so much our talk, but our walk. And the only way they pay attention to your talk is when your walk is contradictory to your talk. That is when they bring the two and compare and say, Ay, Molokori, what is this you're talking By the way, even pagan people will call you, will remind you that you're a Molokori. You get it? Eh? Hey, somebody, we are in this journey growing together, even as reverends. One time I was around Kawempe, and uh, there was a struggle on, uh, you know, how taxis want to join this side, then a border the other side, then, you know, and I intentionally refused somebody. I, I drove so close, and the taxi man shouted, Hey, now a father! <laughs> you know, it's, it's when your walk contradicts your talk that, the, that even non-believers have the permission to remind you and so, as children of the light, texts like these should remind us every day to walk as children of the light. Amen. Every day, all the time. And it says in verse 9, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. So, he's talking about both character. Paul is talking about both character and behavior. Good means generous, right, means both holy and just, true. It's, 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 it deals with the fakeness that comes with us sometimes when we confess something else. When we are in the presence of believers, oh, we are the most holy. However, when the fellowship is not anywhere present, we do otherwise. And then he brings out something interesting that I've called worshipping wisely. Worshipping wisely. In other words, walk in wisdom. Verse 15 to verse 21, he brings in a subject. He says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise. Look carefully. 
don't just look recklessly. You must look carefully. In other words, if you are not careful, it's possible that you'll miss it. You have to pay a bit of more attention. You have to take a bit of time. You have to put in effort for you to look carefully how you walk. If you're not careful, you might think you are walking right when actually you're walking wrong. So you must look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Walk carefully. Look carefully. Not recklessly. And then he adds something to help us. Making the best use of time because the days are evil. Making the most means take advantage of every opportunity. Take advantage of every opportunity that shows up. Be wise is kind of um, being tuned to God the whole time. That's wisdom. Because if you're not tuned to God the whole time, it's possible that there are certain things you're going to miss. Why? The days are evil. The devil is always working against God. The devil is always working against God's people and against God's kingdom. Always. Please pay attention. Always. Not just a few hours. And so the only way I can allow you to pray the prayer watch is three, I don't know when. If that brings you a habit of prayer, praise the Lord. Go for it. But do not be deceived that there is an hour when the devil is off duty and there is an hour when God is resting and now is more operational. Or God gets tired like human beings that when everybody is awake, God is so busy and so he's tired, he might miss your prayer. But you know, wait until it is night when people have slept, now God is less busy. And that is thinking of God like a human being. But also it is to some level an expression of ignorance. Because there are parts of the world that are awake when for us we are sleeping. So if you think now it is night, so God is less busy. It's just because your exposure is limited to Uganda. You get it. Eh? So don't be deceived. It is every opportunity, the whole time. Because the days are evil. Take advantage. Every second, every minute, you have an opportunity to shine for Jesus every day. In your family, at campus, amidst strangers, friends, everywhere, at church. Be wise. Because the devil is just waiting for you to just become reckless. And bang. So being wise is really walking with God the whole time. Walking in wisdom means you are aware that you don't have to waste any time or any opportunities. Into, in this passage, he mentions the things that the church at Ephesus was struggling with. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to the butchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit enables you to keep in sync with the Lord, to keep aligned with the word and the will of God. As we walk in the light, we need to ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit every day. I know about the theological argument of, you see, when you accept Jesus Christ, you have a deposit of the Holy Spirit. That is true, but there is need for you to every day express your dependence on this Holy Spirit. Give me wisdom. I am about to do ABC. The Lord give me wisdom. I am about to get here. Lord give me wisdom. And the result is a joyful, unashamed life. Freely praising God in songs. It is a thankful life at all times and for everything. And that is why verse 19 and 20 says, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One more time, I want to encourage us, as we prepare to pray, walk in the love of God. Walk in the light of God. Walk in the wisdom of God. There is no chance, there is no allowance for you to just become careless with your spirituality. Your spirituality is your personal responsibility and therefore you can't be afforded to be careless with it. 
You can't just be reckless. Be careful, particularly because the days are evil. The devil's factory does not close. They are producing new schemes and new ways every now and then. And when you just think, ah, me, I am okay, that's where he catches you and hits you. Please arise, let us pray. Let's just have a moment of examination as we think about our walk with the Lord. Particularly to think about the influence of your flesh. How much have you been willing to sacrifice your comforts for the sake of the Lord, for the sake of being aligned in the will of God? Paul says, be imitators of God as beloved children. Have you accepted yourself as a, as a beloved? Is that what you, are you beloved? And as a beloved child, daughter of God, beloved son of God, are you excited about imitating your father, loving sacrificially? And maybe you have struggles. Do you want to go ahead now? And just express yourself to say, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I want to be like you. I want to love like you. I want to, I want to, to teach like you, to pray like you. Yes, Lord. I want to be patient like you. Because I'm your child, I'm your son, I am your daughter. I want to imitate you. I want to be like you. Walk like you. Thank you for loving me unconditionally. But give me grace to extend this to those among us to whom I live. But also that you are once darkness, but now you are the light, the light of Christ. To ask your Father that you may shine attractively, that you will shine to attract other people. They will see you, not because you want credit, but that people will see Christ when they see you and be attracted to Christ by simply observing your character, your behavior. Thank you, Lord, that at one time we were darkness, but now we are the light. In the Lord, give us grace to walk as children of the light. Yes, Lord, to walk as children of the light. Not following, not conforming to the patterns of this world not conforming to the patterns, not giving in to the demands of the flesh, the demands of the world, but rather being transformed every day into your likeness, being transformed every day as we renew our mind and our attitudes to be like Christ. And Lord, we ask that you give us wisdom to walk in these bad days. Yes, Lord, these bad days. Yes, Lord, these bad days. Where children are questioning their parents. Where the world is redefining marriage. Where the world is redefining truth. Redefining right and wrong. In these bad days, Lord. To walk carefully to pay attention, to put in effort to live up to your revealed standard. Lord, to walk wisely, to make decisions that honor you. Lord, even when we are pressured, even when it's difficult for us to remain faithful, Lord, to be wise about it. Lord, especially that will be witnesses. Come on, lift up your voice and ask for wisdom. James says, does any one of you lack wisdom? Let him ask of the Lord. Ask from the Lord for wisdom. How to engage in business, ask for wisdom. How to engage with worldly people you're working with, ask for wisdom. How to engage, how to confront situations, how to deal with circumstances, situations, how to parent, how to to remain a man and a woman of integrity when all your competitors have lost it. Ask for wisdom. Wisdom. Lord, grant
grant us wisdom like Solomon cried out. We cry out this afternoon for wisdom. For wisdom, Lord. Nothing else but your wisdom. Because when we are wise, then we will walk in your will and you'll be glorified. Lord, might there be somebody in this congregation. Lord, might there be somebody worshiping with us online who has a unique burden, a special burden. Would you reach out to them right now? Would you graciously, loving Father, would you graciously reach out to that one person that is standing in your presence, sitting in your presence, that one person, Lord, that is crying out to you, pouring out their hearts to you. May your voice reach out to that person who is in a wilderness of some sort. May you bring that voice of hope in the midst of that wilderness this afternoon and just answer them and just reach them and just meet them right there in that wilderness, Lord. In that wilderness, may your voice, may your intervention reach them, meet them there and turn around things and change things to your praise and to your glory. Yes, Lord, in that wilderness, come on, ask the Lord in my wilderness. Tell him, Lord, in my wilderness, reach me, reach me. Where my faith is failing, Lord, reach me that my faith will not fail. In my wilderness, where my trust is failing, where I'm crumbling, reach me, Lord. Do not allow the devil to celebrate. In my wilderness, Lord, I would want to meet you. Lord, I don't ask you to take me out of this valley, but I want you to meet me in this valley. For the God of the valley is the God of the mountain. So Lord, come through for each one of us. That person, under the sound of my voice this afternoon. And it is all to your praise. It is all to your glory, Lord. And Lord, in this mission month, in this mission week, maybe there's somebody who does not know you that is worshiping with us online, that is with us in this congregation. Lord, pour out your grace of salvation. If you are that person who would want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, just go ahead to say, Lord, accept me. Just confess Christ as Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I believe you can save me. I believe you died on the cross for my salvation. Today, I receive you as Lord and Savior. Today, I confess that I am born again. And Lord, accept them. Receive them. Lord, forgive them and fill them with your Holy Spirit. And if you are that person, you can just send us a message online, just text to us or if you're in this congregation see me after this meeting shortly Lord I now pray for your children that have brought offerings, tithes, thanksgiving in this lunch hour bless them whatever offering they have, whatever gift they have brought in your presence accept it and bless it Lord, use it to advance your kingdom Lord, I pray that gift, as they give generously, not giving because they have, but giving because everything comes from you. I pray for them as they give this afternoon. Accept those offerings. And you have promised, Lord, thank you for the promise that when we give, it comes back to us. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, Lord. Meet them. Supply all their needs according to your riches in glory. And as we move out of this sanctuary, please, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. The blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Release us with your blessing, the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The blessing of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be upon you, beloved children of God. As you walk in the light, as you walk in wisdom to fight the flesh, May that blessing of God never leave you. A blessing be upon your offerings. That blessing 
never leave us, our loved ones, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. A hand clap to the Lord, everybody. <laughs>